Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to another Path of Exile video. In today's video I want to talk about some stealth buffs to some items in Path of Exile Scourge League. A lot of things have come up and even though they're not necessarily in the patch notes, quite a few things got buffed either by the League mechanic or by some of the changes that are being made overall, such as uh, the flask changes, which I'll go over. But uh, the first thing I want to talk about here is is Doriani's prototype. So Doriani's prototype will apply uh, lightning resistance or your lightning resistance to the enemies around you and instead you mitigate uh, lightning resistance or lightning damage with your armor. Now normally this was gotten around by basically changing your lightning resistance to other damage types to get around it but uh, we kind of got a double stealth buff here. So first of all, it's going to be remarkably easy to get uh, lower lightning resistance compared to before. There were plenty of things that lowered your lightning resistance previously. Uh, you had your like threads of hope, which are still going to be used in this kind of build, of course. Uh, but yeah, you had a lot of different things that could be used. Um, but we're going to have even more stuff. So if you look at the new Scourged items, you see that some of them roll minus to uh, resistance and then give you a benefit to compensate. Now, this is uh, really good in this build, obviously, because potentially you could roll minus to lightning resistance and then something that can benefit your build, turning what should be a negative and a positive to a double positive. You can get these on all of your pieces of gear. This one, for instance, gives minus 10% to all elemental resistance and plus one to minimum frenzy charges, which is quite nice because you can already craft a minimum frenzy charge on jewelry and then you could potentially corrupt and that's a tier three corrupt so it might be a little bit more difficult to get but um this one's a tier one corrupt as you can see it says scourge tier one on the bottom and uh, scourge tier three here um so if you can get a nice upside for your build with minus lightning resistance you're going to be able to on all 10 or nine maybe because maybe you won't be able to get minus resistance on your weapons i'm not entirely sure uh but for most of your other gear you'll be able to get minus lightning resistance now in the patch notes they did cap the negative lightning resistance you can drop two to negative 200 probably to uh, avoid kind of uh this exact kind of thing but negative 200 percent lightning resistance is huge because if an enemy normally had 75 percent lightning resistance you're already doing four times more damage bringing them to zero for instance if you're an inquisitor um and then you can basically uh triple that again or double that no triple yeah, triple that again. So you'll be basically doing like 12 times as much damage as you would normally do to most enemies. Uh, if I got my math right. Might be a little wrong. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you see any other things that have been stealth buffed. But the other, uh, the double buff part is, it's going to be a lot easier to cap your mitigation from armor. They changed the formula for armor. Uh, they buffed discipline, in it, or not discipline, uh, determination in a huge way. And uh, also, there are going to be variant bases. So, for instance, uh, Currently, this is on a Saint's Hauberk. Uh, we can roll up to 15% more, which is going to be like another 60-something. Uh, so uh, the base armor on this could be over 500. Uh, that means it'll scale both the quality and the up to 200% increased armor and energy shield more efficiently. And as a result, we could be looking at you know, higher base numbers on these things in the first place, plus on all of your other gear as well. Uh, so we can scale armor higher. We have a an aura that can basically give us uh, flat armor plus uh, more armor, which is huge. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different ways we can get to much higher armor numbers. And then once we've reached those higher armor numbers, they will be more efficient in mitigating not only the physical damage, but now our lightning damage as well. So really big change there. Um, and one of the ways that you can actually uh, do this as well is through uh, the formless uh, Inferno, which will increase your armor by uncapped fire resistance. So this is the other stealth buff. The inverse of the uh, of the what I just went over there is that we can also get 
additional resistances on all of our piece of gear. Uh, this means that things like uh, the Formless Inferno and uh, the Perfect Form can potentially provide us an enormous amount of armor and evasion rating, uh, respectively, which have been themselves buffed as well, uh, possibly making it so that we can reach huge numbers of either of these uh, without any investment into percent armor or in percent uh, evasion on the tree, freeing up all sorts of different things to put into damage and life. Uh, this is really, really nice. And uh, yeah, it's kind of worked out the same way where we will just put plus resistances on all of our gear, plus a downside that uh, we don't really benefit or that doesn't really bother our build, I mean. So we, uh, you know, deal no physical damage. This is fine if we're doing a build that deals no physical damage, obviously. And then we can potentially get a, a bunch of armor or evasion. This is really huge. Uh, but probably the most interesting stealth buff, I think, is two uh, flasks. Now, um, one of the things that happened with flasks is extending utility flask duration. This is going to be absolutely huge, and it's actually going to buff the Ascendant quite a lot. I actually expect to see quite a few Ascendants, because I did some math, and currently the increase on the base duration of things like a Stibnite Flask, which will probably be used quite a lot, um, you know, your Silver Flasks and your Quicksilver, um, they're going up considerably from 4 seconds to 6 seconds and from 5 seconds to 8 seconds. And of course, uh, Gold and Iron are going up uh, as well. Uh, but these will be easy to scale as well, but I kind of want to focus on some of the like Quicksilver, Diamond, uh, Granite, Basalt, Stibnite, Jade, Quartz, all that kind of silver, all of these ones, uh, I'm kind of focusing my math a little bit more on. So, First of all, uh, unique flasks. Unique flasks, I've been using rot gut a lot. So uh, what I do generally on a build is I will use uh, blood rage and uh, rot gut to generate frenzy charges. And uh, then I will proceed to uh, basically have it auto cast using an instilling orb, I believe, uh, so that it will automatically cast every time the duration runs out. However, um, the, you can gain with three frenzy charges, you gain nine seconds of onslaught, but the, uh, flask itself only lasts like six seconds. Uh, with these changes, it'll last about nine seconds, which perfectly matches that, uh, meaning you'll be able to keep your frenzy charges at three for longer, which will increase your overall damage. It'll help against bosses, that kind of thing as well. So, uh, because it does reset you back down to zero and then you have to regain the frenzy charges. It's usually not that big of a deal in like dense maps, but in some less dense areas, it actually is a little annoying that it resets so frequently. So that is one thing uh, you can consider. But more importantly, uh, let's take a look here at a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the Pathfinder Ascendancy on Ascendant as well as the, uh, of course, Pathfinder node, Nature's Boon itself. Both of these have flask gain three charges every three seconds. Now, that means uh, basically, you know, one to one second type thing. So you're going to be getting a flask a second, uh, essentially. Currently, in order to sustain, say, a Quicksilver flask, you would have to get quite a bit of duration in order to have permanent uptime, which is fine if you're a Pathfinder yourself, you get a lot of flasks over on that side of the tree, but now you'll be able to take the Pathfinder node in the Ascendant on every character, any character that you want to have permanent flask uptime on for all of your utility flasks, you do Instilling Orb and have them re uh, reapply every time they've run out, and you'll be able to never, ever, ever run out of any of your utility flasks using just this node. And then you can just take whatever you need as far as your other ascendancy node. Um, so the way this works is that uh, Quicksilver flask has 4.8 with quality. So now two things, um, the base duration increase will scale quality. So it will go from, instead of from four seconds to 4.8, it'll go from six seconds to 7.2 with 20% quality. 
this is really huge but for instance in a quicksilver flask you would need um 10 seconds to replenish the 30 consumed charges and i'm not factoring in um the uh chance for flasks to not consume charges i'm just gonna assume that's not there at all it is gonna factor in in reality but because it's a chance i'm just not gonna pretend it's not there well so um we now have 7.2 seconds that's cool um they are actually first of all it makes uh, things like experimenters, which gives increased duration, more efficient. Because now at max, uh, giving up to uh, potentially 6 seconds duration, well, that's already the base. So we go from 7.2 up to uh, we get another uh, 1.8 seconds on top of that. So we're already at 9 seconds with this, um, which means we're basically already there. Uh, you can also do... Uh, increased charge re recovery, reduced charges used. If we used reduced charges used, it'd go down to 24, and then we would only need 8 seconds, and we would have 7.2. Well, you just put increased flask effect duration on any belt. That's it. That's all you need. Either reduced charge used or increased duration, and then um, increased flask duration on belt, and pathfinder ascendancy and it works the math works out for silver flasks as well this would normally take uh, what like 13 seconds to regain uh silver flask but uh we would instead with the silver flask <clears throat> we would do uh reduce charged use because it is uh and i'm not even factoring the fact that chemists and uh experimenters are going to have higher values that can roll in higher maps so like uh here let me pull that up really quick so uh for instance uh where are they i believe they're down here um we have increased duration now goes up to 40 percent 40 percent obviously is going to be another 2.4 seconds so if we were able to get that on uh on those flasks it's going to be huge and then um that's not even factoring in either uh like stib night flasks those are going up to eight seconds it'll be so easy to maintain these incredibly easy so yeah you just get the flask effect you get either uh chemists or experimenters um and that will do it because for a silver flask that would drop it by eight that would be 30 Three, that means you need 11 seconds um, and you are able to get right around 11 seconds with 20% flask effect duration um, as well as the quality on top of that and um, yeah that's that's pretty much it that is going to be uh, and then stib night flask stib night flask is even better because the base duration is going to be eight seconds um, you know the quality is going to scale that up to 9.6 seconds um and same thing since it's 40 you would go with the uh reduced charge use drop it down to this it would require 11 um and so you would easily easily be able to uh same thing maintain these permanently um just with like the increased and you can always use other flask modifiers if necessary but it shouldn't be necessary you should be able to just permanently keep these up all the time and then you'll get like the increased movement speed increased uh, uh recover life when you use flask and increased attack speed just permanently up all the time so it's perfect for just about any build you can keep them up all the time um yeah that's pretty much it so those were the stealth buffs that I've noticed during uh, for the new patch. If you have any more, let me know in the comment section below. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye!